What's up everybody? Uh, gonna bring you another video here today from the Grafton Archery Shop. Uh, today I wanna talk about D-loops and how to install your own, uh, kind of the whole process. So I've got one of the uh, shop's VXR28s here by Matthews. Uh, it doesn't have a D-loop on it. I'm gonna go ahead and put an orange one on there just for ease of uh, y'all being able to see me tie this thing on here. First thing I wanna talk about is here at the shop, they've got a, uh, a reference mark marked on the table, kind of to talk, kind of to, uh, that's where they've had the best luck with length of D-loop um, and that's what they cut them at. So let's measure this and I'll tell you kind of what the measurement is on this one. And that's just a good standard reference, a good standard starting point. That is about four and a half inches long, roundabout. So, uh, when you start to make your own, you can start out about this. Just remember that it's going to kind of depend on what release you shoot, uh, uh, your draw length. If your draw length's just a little short, it may make you feel a little different. Uh, it gives you, it doesn't change your draw length of your bow, but it may actually move your back hand just enough to where it feels more comfortable to you. And you can change that by adjusting the uh, length of your D loop. But Best case scenario, you've got the perfect draw length. Everything is set up correctly on your bow. That's what we're gonna use as this uh, situation here on this bow. Everything's set up perfectly. Uh, we're gonna cut one, cut a piece of D-loop material uh, at four and a half inches long. So that's our starting point. That's where we're starting at. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually take the end of this and hopefully you can see, I'm gonna take the end of this D-loop here, this material, and I'm just gonna fray it back just like so and you can see one end is pretty well smooth and one end is frayed out and that's what we're going to start with take your lighter and i burn around the sides like so and then i turn it up just a little bit just to get the ball you don't want to burn it just like that just a little it's all melted and it's like a bulge like a like a mushroom almost and you want to do that to both sides so i'm going to fray this side out Go ahead and get it where it needs to be. Just like so. And it doesn't have to be exactly on the same on both sides. It's just, you want to get it balled up enough to where it's not going to pull through when you tie your knots. And like I said, you don't want to completely light it on fire and let it burn because you don't want it to bubble up too much. And then what I noticed that a lot of guys will do, they'll take their lighter and they'll actually flatten out while it's melted, they'll take and push on it and flatten out the end. That's not what you want to do. You want to leave it rounded like this because that's going to leave the most meat there on the end. All right, so now that we got that, that's our starting point. We got our ends burnt, um, four and a half inches starting point on our D-loop length. What we want to do now is start tying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch over to this other camera and we'll start from there. So. What we want to do is I'm going to come underneath the string. Both my ends are, are not uh, still ta they're not tacky anymore. They're nice and hard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start underneath the end, underneath the string, like so. I'm going to push my ends back towards myself, back towards your body, right? And this is going to be our bottom knot. Just like so. Bring it in nice and tight. You can see what the knot looks like on that side. And you wanna make sure that your string itself, your, your end here is on whichever knot you wanna tie first, if you wanna start on the top or the bottom, whatever it may be, you wanna make sure that your, your tag end is the closest to the arrow shaft. So if your knock is gonna be, if this is gonna be your bottom knot, here's your knock. Let me go ahead and stick an arrow in here just so you can see the reference. Here's your knock. You want your tag end closest to your knock. You don't want the knot, you don't want the ball of your knot near your knot. So just remember that. All right, so we started on the bottom. I'm gonna go underneath again, just like so. And I'm gonna pull it through, just like I did. I'll do it again just so you can see it. Let me move my arrow out of the way. So you know how we started. Now I'm gonna go underneath the string again with the tag in. I'm going to go over the string and bring it back towards me and I'm going to go through my loop just like so. Pull it tight. Just pull it through enough where you got a tag in. Now, now that we got this, we just went underneath. We went underneath the string and then back over, right? So now we're going to go over the string 
and back through. Back through the same loop. So what you'll notice here is that my loops have, are alternated from each other. And that's exactly what you want. What you don't want and I'll show you that here in a minute. What you don't want is you don't want your knots on the same side of the string. So you don't want both of your loops facing the same direction. You want it turned. And the cool thing about it is since it's turned this way, what it's not going to do is it's not going to apply any torque to your string. When you draw your bow back, they're going against each other. So it's actually, if you twist it all, they're, see how they're twisting against each other? They're not twisting in the same direction. If they twist in the same direction, it could cause torque to your string. So this is how you want it to look when you get finished with your tying, all right? So from there, what you wanna do is, it's gonna be easiest if you use a set of these uh, knock, and plier, knock pliers from Easton, or there's, another, there's a couple other options out there. Uh, I don't have any on this side of the table, but you can either use something like this or you can use a, a set of needle nose. These have grooves already cut in them in the ends that you can see right there. But you can use a set of needle nose and what you wanna do is you wanna come in here, tighten it up just a little bit, get it snug where you can still move it. Now this bow here doesn't have a rest on it so it's not gonna be exactly where it, where it needs to be uh, but this is just for reference. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna line my arrow shaft up with my burger hole. Um, which is the hole where your uh, rest mounts on your riser. So I've got that lined up, and just for this video's sake, I'm going to show you kind of where I put them. So you got your D-loop in there, you got your knock in there, you got your arrow where it needs to be. All right, so now what we can do is we can go ahead and snug it down. Now, for a new bow setup or something like that, what you want to do is you want to leave this somewhat loose, enough to where you can still move it because you may have to make some minor adjustments um, when you're tuning your bow. If you know that's where it needs to be, your bow's already tuned. If you're just replacing your D-loop, which I feel like most of y'all will be that are watching this video, you, you just your D-loop broke, you want to replace it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and tighten this one down. Just like that. And when you tie your D-loop in this way and you lock her down, that D-loop's not going anywhere. Now, my personal preference when I tie my D-loops in, what I actually do is I actually serve the um, center serving of my string. I actually put my knock where it needs to be and I actually do serving string on each side of my knock and that locks my knock in place where it needs to be. And then I put my D-loop on the other, each side of that. If you're gonna do that, uh, unless you know exactly what you're doing, I recommend bringing it up here to Grafton Archery and let those guys do it for you. The good thing about that um, is a lot of times it'll keep your D-loop um, from actually pinching on your knock. So once your D-loop is in there, you wanna make sure you've got some room to move. So I hope you can see that on this. You can see my knock still has room to play. It's got play in it. And what that does is when you draw your bow back, there's a chance that your knocking points could pinch in together and pinch your knock tight, and that's not what you want. You want room in there when you're drawing your bow back. That keeps your arrow from getting a weird kick and flying funny. So if you do like I do, and you want to serve on each side of your knocking point, that's fine. Um, you don't have to do that. I just started doing that this year, and I don't know that I've noticed a difference, but it's just peace of mind for myself. Um, I know what I'm doing with my bow. Uh, I have a press at home. If I screw something up, I can always just stick it in the press and, and, and mess with it again and get it fixed. Um, but uh, there is two options. You can either do your D-loop like this, which is the most common way, uh, where you don't actually do any serving material in between uh, and you just tighten your knock, knock uh, your D-loop right down. And I've, ha I've not had any people come in saying they've had any issues as long as it's been tied correctly. If you don't tie your knots correctly, or you tie your knots backwards, or anything like that, it can come loose, and it can cause torque on your string, and uh, it could cause issues with your shot, um, and it, it could cause your D-loop to actually pinch in on your knock. So that's a correctly tied D-loop there. Now just remember that if you're right versus left-handed, depending on how you turn a thumb release, so my personal, this is my personal thumb release here. It's a Carter Wise choice. So say I clip in, I'm right-handed. So when I draw back, I'm gonna turn my thumb release towards my face, which will be like this when I draw back, okay? 
So just keep that in mind when you tie your D-loop in, you can actually tie it where your knots twist in the correct direction, uh, which that would be, this will be right for me. Um, the top knot faces my face, the bottom knot faces away. Uh, that's correct by the way that I turn my, um, my by the way that I turn my uh, thumb release. Uh, but you're really getting in the weeds there. That's not something that really, if you're not a target archer that's shooting, you know, for money, you're not going to notice that much of a difference on the direction that you tie your knots. Just make sure that they're opposite from each other. That's the biggest key to this. Make sure your knots are opposite. So now that we've got that, a correctly tied peep slot or correctly tied D loop, I should say, that's what it's going to look like. Let me give you one more shot at it so you can see. That's a correctly tied D loop, opposite from each other, just like so. Now, let me show you what it looks like on a incorrectly tied D loop. And this one I didn't tighten all the way down so I can pop it loose. All right, so we got our bottom knot. Um, the bottom knot is facing me, the, 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 um, the actual knot itself is facing me. So now what I want to do is I want to go on top of my string. Let's say, go back through like so. Just like so. And now let's take a look at this thing. So now what you'll notice, and I hope you can tell the difference between this and the last one that I just showed you. What you'll notice is that the knots themselves are facing the same direction. That is not what you want. That is a poorly tied D loop. So if you see that, if you go to a archery shop and they do that, they probably honestly did it mistakenly because each shop should know how to tie a correctly tied D loop. They probably honestly mistakenly did this and it's easy to do. You get busy, you get to where you're doing something, you're doing two or three different things. You could tie it backwards like this. But if you notice that, just say, hey, would you mind switching those knots around and tying it, you know, tying it this way? I know that uh, this is the way it's supposed to be tied. Nine times out of 10, they're gonna be like, oh crap, yeah, I did that wrong, so let me fix it. Um, if not, if they get mad and say it doesn't matter, you may wanna go check out another archery shop because they should know this is the way, to, that was the, the other way I showed you is the way you should tie your D-loop in. Now, I'm sure like anything else, there's other ways to tie it. Um, correctly um, where you don't have any issues but that's just the way that I know without a shadow of a doubt you're not going to have any issues with your D-loop moving or twisting or causing torque on your string so hopefully you got something out of that video um, I'm going to go ahead and tie this back around so that the next guy that uses this has a correctly tied D-loop and because this bow itself doesn't have a uh, rest yet I'm just going to go ahead and leave this D-loop um, a little bit loose where it can be moved, but just tight enough where it doesn't come untied. It's like so. All right, so hopefully you got something out of that. Hopefully you enjoyed that video, and uh, I'm going to bring you some more content here pretty soon. So thanks for watching. Come check these guys out up here at Grafton Archery. Uh, they'll get you set up correctly the first time, and you'll be good to go. So we'll talk to you later on the next video. Uh, please like and subscribe below. Uh, please share these videos out to your friends. Uh, have them take a, take a look at them and check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Trying to grow the channel, trying to keep putting some good content out there to y'all, and uh, appreciate you watching. We'll catch you on the next video.